Okay, y'all, uh, welcome to week five of virtual learning. Sorry, I'm just scooting in here. Um, this is your homework and what it's going to look like. I can kind of scroll down here, and you can see it's really only 16 problems. And there are going to be video links here, which you can see here, here, where it says video. You're going to click onto those links, watch a short video like this one, and then get going. This will probably be the longest of all of them because I'm just going to have a couple of introductory things. Like, for instance, at the very top, it says that our, our learning target here, of course, is just operations with radicals. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. We're going to be completing this squaring here. We're going to square roots. Um, we're going to be simplifying radicals. We're going to be using quotient rules, etc., uh, product rules. Um, stay with me here. We'll get to all that stuff in other videos. But a couple of things you need to know. Radical. Radical is a, is a root. Okay, we're going to be using square root, but there are such things as cube roots, fourth roots, and so on. But we're only going to use square roots. Okay, um, then uh, a radical expression is really anything that has a square root in it. Like for instance, square root of 12, which actually we can break down. And the first part of your assignment, and I'm going to actually show you the answers to this in just a second, is filling in this chart here. Of course, you're going to do this on a separate sheet of paper. You're not going to be able to write into this. Okay. Um, but you're going to do this on a separate sheet of paper, and you're just going to input it in here. I guess if you really wanted to put all your answers, you could here. But I need to see a separate sheet of paper for your work. Not necessarily for these, maybe, but for everything below it. Okay? Because, again, I'm going to show you the answer. So think about what squaring a number means. It means like 4 squared, this squared, will give me 16. Because 4 squared means 4 times 4, which is 16. And now square roots work the other way. Because the square root of 16 equals 4. Right? Think of what is 7 times 7. Most of you will say 49 right away. You're right. That's what you're right here. 49. Okay? And then the square root of 49 will give you 7. The square root of 9 will give you 3 and so on. Okay? You'll be filling in that entire thing, which will look, again, if you're watching these videos, this will help because I'm not going to post this, that. So you can say the square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 81 is 9, the square root of 25 is 5, and so on. So using this to do your assignment is kind of a big deal. Okay. Now, that is part of the assignment. Easy, easy, easy. Just go in your calculator, go 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, and you'll get all those numbers that I just showed you. Or pause it in the video where I just showed you that and copy that in. Okay. All right. So why do we want to do that? Because we want to break all of these in to something I can take the square root of, and something I cannot take the square root of. And we're trying to find the biggest number. So when I look at those numbers, I see 4. And 4 will go into 32. 4 times 8. That one everybody knows. The problem is, is I can still break down 8 further. Okay? So another thing, let's see, 9, does that go into 32? No, 16 goes into there twice. 16 goes into there twice. Okay, cool. So that's how we can do it. Okay? Let's take a look at breaking this down into 16 times 2. And what your square root property says is that we can split those up, right? Instead of square root of 16 times 2, I can rewrite that as square root of 16 times the square root of 2. And now I have something that I can square root, 16, which is 4. That was the first thing that I actually gave you on the assignment. And the square root of 2 that I can't just comes along for the ride. And that's it. That's my answer. Something I can square root, something I do, can't. Square root the one I can, pull out the rest of it. Okay. Now, if I would have said square root of 4 and square root of 8, that's not wrong. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 8 is square root of 8. But, this can actually be broken down too. 2 times, this is 4 times 2. So, if I go like this, this square root of 4 is 2. And when I times these together, I get to that answer. So, if you find the biggest number... It simplifies in two steps. If you don't, you're going to have to keep going. And 8, ladies and gentlemen, shows up a lot. Okay? All right. Next problem. Negative. Uh, 6 times 63 is 9 times 7. And that actually works out really nice because the square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 7, I can't do. That's it. Something I can square root, I pull out. Something I can't. Okay? 125. Okay, I start looking at that sheet. Does 4 go into it? Does 9, I'm looking through this, rate, this row. Does 4 go into it? Does 9 go into it? Does 16 go into it? Does 25? 25 does. That's like a buck 25, which is 5 quarters. So this is 25 times 5, right? Which again is square root of 25 and square root of 5. Something I can take the square root of? 
That's 5. And something I can't. Square root of 5. That's it. That's the answer. Okay? So, maybe press pause a second and try and work through these four at the bottom here. This is square root of 24, square root of 108, negative square root of 54, and negative square root of 8. And this one I kind of just gave away a second ago. Okay? Press pause, try those out, come back and check. Okay, as I said, this is 4 and 2, and I get negative 2 square root of 2. 8 is going to show up a lot. If you see an 8, you can break it down further. Same thing with 54. Okay? Negative, that is 27 times 2. And that might have been hard to see. 9 doesn't go into it. 9 times 6 is 54, excuse me. But then I would have to keep going. Okay? 9 times 6 is 54. Yeah, that's what I should have used. I'm thinking cube roots. I can't square root of 27. You see how that works? 27 wasn't in that list, right? 25 is in that list. 36 is in that list. And I just gave you the answer. It's 9 times 6, right? So that is the square root negative of 9 and 6, which is negative 3 square root of 6. You do it, you pull out what you can and what you can't, what you can't goes right back under the sign. Okay? 24 is going to be, well, let's see, that's 2 times 12, and neither of those numbers show up here, right? It's 3 times 8, and again, 3 and 8 don't show up in here. It's 4 times 6, and I could square root 4. We know that that's 2. Okay, sweet. So, this is square root of 4 and square root of 2, or 6, excuse me, gives me 2 square roots of 6, okay? And the last one, okay, so I get 2 times 54, I get 3 times 36, that's going to be the winner, right? That's going to be the winner. I could also do 4 times 27, um, which I could do, but again, let me get this biggest number out of here. This is just 36 times 3. And I can square root each one of those. This is 6 square roots of 3. Okay? <coughs> and that is that entire assignment. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that is part A, which again, you're going to probably want to use this chart. Okay? Um, and the first part of your assignment, of course, the screen's going to go black. Let's see if I can get this up here again. Okay? Is put that table in there and then work on just these four problems from that section. Okay, very similar problems. Um, use that to help you, okay? All right, so here we've got next page. All right, actually, that's it for this set of notes. I keep forgetting what I'm doing. Look for the next video for the next set.